If the Great Wall of China is an architectural symbol of the greatness of ancient China, the Qinghai Tibet Railway may be the embodiment of modern China, its power, industriousness, and determination. Tibet is called the Forbidden Land. This is the highest mountain plateau on the planet, and until recently the path to the Tibetan shrines was long and difficult. In just five years and three and a half billion dollars, China built a 1,150-kilometer highway connecting the so-called Roof of the World with the main territory of the country. Back in the early 1920s, the revolutionary Sun Yat-sen, in his program plan for the reconstruction of China, proposed building about 100,000 kilometers of new railways in the country, including lines on the Tibetan Plateau. For objective reasons, the idea of the father of the nation could return only in the 1950s under Chairman Mao. The railway project to Lhasa, the capital of Tibet, was approved by 1960. However, construction was frozen for almost a decade and a half. China struggled to reap the benefits of the Great Leap Forward. Only in 1974, the construction of the first section of the future highway, from the capital of Qinghai province, the city of Xining to Golmud, already on the Tibetan Plateau, was resumed. 814 kilometers of the railway were built by the army and prisoners in five years, by 1979, but passenger traffic was open here only in 1984. Work on the second high-altitude section to Lhasa was associated with engineering challenges of particular complexity. The builders had to work in conditions of permafrost, lack of oxygen, and in addition, the unique Tibetan ecosystem, the preservation of which was declared by the Chinese party and government as a matter of paramount importance. Only at the beginning of the 21st century, the country reached a level of technological readiness that made it possible to launch a large-scale infrastructure project. Moreover, the construction of the railway to Lhasa has become a key stage in the development program of Western China, the purpose of which is to eliminate the disproportion in the development of the eastern and western regions of the country. Another important, and perhaps the main, task of the government of the People's Republic of China was to strengthen the ties of the Tibetan autonomy, control over which was re-established only in 1950 with the main Chinese territory. According to the project approved in 2000 by Chinese President Jiang Zemin, the total length of the new railway was to be 1,142 kilometers. 45 stations were organized on this section, 38 of which were automatic, without service personnel. The Tibetan railway from Golmud ascended from 2,800 meters above sea level to the Tangla Pass, 5,072 meters, and then descended again to Lhasa, 3,642 meters. About 80% of the entire new section, 960 kilometers, passed through difficult high mountainous regions at an altitude of over 4,000 meters above sea level, of which about 550 kilometers were located in the permafrost zone. The railroad construction, there was a serious engineering problem. The fact is that the upper layer of permafrost tends to thaw in a short summer period, sometimes turning into an impenetrable swamp. In this regard, a real threat was posed by soil movement, which could lead to deformation and destruction of the track. In order to eliminate such a risk, the designers of the Qinghai Tibet Road develop a special scheme of its construction, which actually isolates any impact of the highway on the environment and vice versa. The rails were laid on a special embankment of cobblestones backfilled with a layer of sand. In the transverse projection, the embankment was perforated with a through network of pipes to ensure better ventilation and its slopes were covered with special metal sheets that reflected the sunlight and thereby further prevented its heating. Wells filled with liquid nitrogen were also arranged in some areas. All these measures actually froze the embankment under the road, preventing the heating of the upper layer of permafrost, its thawing and subsequent deformation of the railway track. To compensate for elevation differences in the construction areas, a significant part of the highway was laid along flyovers. In total, 675 bridges were built on its 1,142 kilometers, with a total length of 160 kilometers. The piers of these overpasses are essentially piles, whose bases rest deep in the permafrost, so that seasonal thawing of its upper layer has no effect on the structural stability of the structure. The gaps between the supports columns do not prevent the free circulation of air under them, which allows minimizing the additional thermal effect from the railway. In addition to the technical component, an important advantage of the overpass sections is the fact that they do not interfere with the free movement under the highway of sometimes unique representatives of the local fauna. Thus, the negative effect of foreign inclusion in the Tibetan ecosystem is reduced to a minimum. Sections of the Qinghai-Tibet Road, laid on an embankment on the surface of the earth, 
are fenced along their entire length, and special tunnels and bridges are regularly built for the passage of migratory animals. After construction was completed, the Qinghai Tibet Railway set several railway construction records at once. 350 kilometers from Golmet, at an altitude of 4,900 meters above sea level, the highest mountain railway tunnel in the world was built, called Fengushin. The Tangela Station on the mountain pass of the same name has become the highest railway station in the world. The mountains surrounding it seem more like hills, but this is a deceptive impression. In fact, the three-track Tangela is located at an altitude of 5,068 meters, only 4 meters below the highest point of the entire highway. 5,072 meters. Although trains stop here, this is just a siding on a single track. The station is fully automatic and is controlled from Shining, where the central control of the entire road is located. There are no settlements nearby, which did not prevent the Chinese from building a fairly large station here, worthy of a record-breaking station. In most cases, the doors of the carriages do not even open here. For an unprepared person to be at such an altitude, where the atmospheric pressure is only about 35 to 40 percent of the standard at sea level, poses a certain threat to health. In order to make traveling through the highlands a pleasure for passengers, a special rolling stock was developed for the Shinghai Tibet Road. The American corporation General Electric designed NJ2 diesel locomotives for the line, modified for operation in high altitude conditions, with a capacity of 5,100 horsepower each. Locomotives are capable of speeds up to 120 km per hour with a train of 15 cars. In permafrost zones, their speed is limited to 100 km per hour. The wagons for the maintenance of the road were built at the Chinese plant of the Canadian concerned Bombardier in the amount of 361 pieces, 308 ordinary and 53 special tourist cars. All of them are actually hermetically isolated from the environment, and oxygen pressure inside is maintained close to the standard pressure. Despite this, attacks of altitude sickness caused by a lack of oxygen occurred among passengers. To prevent them, each seat in the carriages is equipped with individual oxygen tubes, similar to hospital ones. Tinted windows of the carriages with a special coating protect passengers from excessive solar radiation, again typical of the highlands. The capacity of the main line is eight pairs of passenger trains per day, not including freight trains. Currently, Lhasa is connected by regular passenger traffic not only with the neighboring regional center Xining, but also with the largest cities of the country, Beijing and Shanghai. The Beijing Lhasa Express is on the way for 44 hours. Ticket prices range from $125 to $200 depending on the class. Construction of the Qinghai Tibet Railway began in 2001. About 20,000 workers who simultaneously began laying the highway from both endpoints, Golmut and Lhasa completed the party's demanding task in just five years, spending $3.68 billion. According to official figures, no one died in the process, even though they worked for a long time in conditions that were not the most comfortable. Over seven years of operation, the road has carried more than 63 million passengers and 300 million tons of freight. The annual passenger turnover rose from 6.5 million people in 2006, when the main line was put into operation, to 11 million people in 2012. The annual cargo turnover grew from 25 million tons in 2006 to 56 million tons in 2012. It is already clear that the new railway has significantly boosted the economic development of Tibet and the neighboring province of Shanghai. The delivery of cargo to Tibet, including energy resources that are especially valuable in mountainous conditions, has become significantly cheaper. The tourism industry has also received a new impetus to development, although it is still impossible for anyone who wants to leave for example to take the Beijing train to Lhasa. To visit Tibet, the Chinese government requires a special permit, without which you simply can't get on the train. Skeptics believe the Qinghai Tibet Railway is just another stage of the gradual colonization of the peculiar autonomous region by China and a locomotive of the development of its natural resources. Geologists have already discovered deposits of copper, lead, zinc and raw materials in the highlands of Tibet, which are urgently needed by the rapidly growing Chinese industry. Environmentalists, of course, fear that the presence of a modern railroad in the region will only encourage the Chinese government to develop these fields as quickly as possible, with unpredictable consequences for the region's fragile ecosystem. However, so far these are just unsubstantiated fears. On the other hand, it is hard to deny the popularity of the road among the inhabitants of Tibet, who got the opportunity to easily and quickly reach the highly developed eastern regions of the country, and especially among tourists, for whom the highway is a wonderful attraction created with typical Chinese tenacity, literally turning mountains. 
A journey along the Qinghai Tibet Railway leaves no one indifferent. It seems that its designers and builders have approached a certain limit, beyond which there is a completely different reality of railway construction. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Karo Show channel. Also watch our previous videos. Goodbye.